trick with the left hand. So you set it up like this. You have your your left hand set up so this is equal to zero and this is 90 degrees. So this represents the first quadrant in the unit circle. This is your 45 degree or your 30 degree reference angle. This is your 45 and your 60. Okay? Basically what we're going to do here is we're going to represent our hand is going to give us the coordinates for the unit circle. It's also going to be representative of sine and cosine because the cosine is, is the x coordinate, the sine value is the y coordinate. So we'll start with the uh, 30 degree reference angle. So if you place this down, this represents your comma. Okay? So you have this as the x and comma y. So everything is over 2, and if I have a 2 or a 3, it's the square root of. So this represents the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Okay, so if we place that in terms of sine and cosine, the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, and then the sine would be 1 half. If we do 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. For 60, 1 half square root of 3 over 2. This even works for the 0 and the 90 degrees. If we take it and we map out 0 degrees, that would be nothing over 2, so it would be 0, comma, the square root of 4, which is 2, over 2, which is 1. So you get 0, comma, 1. If we do 0 degrees, okay, that would be square root of 4 over 2, which would also be 1, comma, zero. Now it represents the actual uh, unit circle and all four, all five number uh, fingers represent the angles from the unit circle in the first quadrant. Now how does this portray, how does this change over to the uh, sine and cosine and in the third or second, third, and fourth quadrants? You have to pay attention to the signs. Hand rule. Um, basically you're looking at the first quadrant, right? So this is, they're all positive in this case. This little anacronym um, allows us to say and determine where my trig functions are positive. So in the first quadrant, naturally, they're all positive. The, the x and the y, or the cosine and the sine, are all positive. Well, if you go around, it's the sine is positive in this quadrant, right? So that means that the y value is going to be positive. Everything else is negative. So the cosine, of course, is the x, which is negative. The tangent, which combines the x and the y, which, of course, any negative and positive, when you combine them, make a negative. Going into tangent, in the third quadrant, you have negative, negative. That means that everything is negative. The x is negative, the y is negative. But when I combine them for tangent, they become positive. When you go over here in cosine, in the fourth quadrant, the x is positive, or the cosine is positive. The y is negative, indicating that the uh, the sine or the tangent in this case would always be a negative value. So when you're looking back at your left hand rule, what you basically you're going to do is you're going to find out exactly what is the reference angle by using your left hand. Then you determine by the sine, uh, or, or literally if I know which quadrant I'm in, then I can tell you exactly what sign should go with that. If I'm in the second quadrant, my sine is going to be positive, but everything else is going to be negative. And so I use this in conjunction with my left hand rule to determine exactly what the sine or what the... I could even use this for my inverse functions by working backwards uh, for, for all of the trig values.